Hey guys, what is up in Cameo? Today we're going to be talking about modems and routers. So whether your electronics got hit in an electric storm or you're just signing up for a new internet provider, you're going to need a modem and router at some point in your life. Now while it might be easy to rent the one from your provider, that's usually not going to be one of the better options when it comes to receiving your full internet speed. So for those of you who choose to buy a modem and router, do you know the difference between a $30 one and a $300 one? Let's talk about it. So let's start with modems. Modems are what's going to take the internet essentially from the cable line or the phone line into the box and then it's going to have an ethernet out which is going to be your internet. This modem is going to come in a couple different forms. There's going to be the DSL modem and the cable modem. DSL is going to come with VDSL or ADSL depending on the speed and that modem is essentially going to use phone wire versus cable line to receive the internet. If you have over 15 megabytes per second from your DSL provider, you're going to want to go with VDSL, anything under 15. ADSL is going to work fine, but if you do have a DSL provider, you need to get the modem that uses the phone line. Now, if you have a cable provider for your internet, like Mediacom, Comcast, Cox, Time Warner Cable, like which is owned by Comcast now, but any cable provider, you're going to need a cable modem. Now, these are going to come pretty standard. DOSX 3.0 is the current technology for modems, so as long as that's what your provider uses, make sure that's the modem you're getting. Now besides how the modem receives its internet, there's going to be two more key differences. There's going to be the channels on the modem and there's going to be the additional features like Wi-Fi built in, more ethernet ports, etc. The channels are going to be what you're going to want to look for. Now if you are a single person living by yourself, and you're paying for cable internet, whatever, and you're looking at modems, Getting the basic cable modem that's like 60 bucks is going to be fine for you as long as you go with a reliable brand like Motorola or Netgear. Getting a modem with 4 to 8 download channels and 2 to 4 upload channels is going to work perfectly fine for someone who lives by themselves or even with one other person. If you have a lot of heavy usage in your house, whether it's a family home or there's just two of you that watch a lot of Netflix or you upload videos or any of that, you're going to want more download channels. So the easiest way to picture it is that the channels on your modem are like an interstate highway. If there are four of you in a home and you're all watching Netflix, Netflix might take up two or three download channels depending on if you're watching HD or 4K, which means they're going to take up two or three lanes on the highway. If you have an eight download channel modem and you're watching four 4K streams at once, you're gonna be using up 12 lanes essentially of traffic, but you only have eight, so four of those are gonna have to go behind more cars and they're gonna be a lot slower. Now watching four 4K streams at once is pretty rare, so do you really need a modem with more than eight download channels and four upload channels? Now to answer that question, sometimes yes and sometimes no. If you live in a house with a couple other people and you guys all have phones, you guys all have computers, you're occasionally watching Netflix, all those devices that are on at once, whether it's a printer or a phone or anything else that's just on Wi-Fi, is gonna take up a channel. So if you have, you know, two, three people living in a house, eight channels might not be enough if you're all heavy users. Me personally, I have an eight channel modem and it works fine for my mom and I, but sometimes if I'm uploading videos specifically, it can get pretty slow. So realistically, it's all gonna depend on how many people you have. If you're living by yourself, eight download channels is plenty four upload channels is plenty. When you get to two or three people or even four or five on a network, that's when you're gonna want 16 download channels, 32 download channels. You're gonna want those higher end modems. And while yes, they're gonna cost more, you're gonna get a lot better performance for your money. So let's talk about routers. Routers I feel like are a lot easier to explain because all of them are going to have an ethernet in to the router and you're usually gonna have four ports on the back along with the Wi-Fi that's produced by the router. That's what the router does and a lot of people get the router mixed up with the modem and they use that term interchangeably, but it's not the same thing. The router is a lot easier though to explain, like I said, because it's all about the model number. So right now there's gonna be two types of Wi-Fi signals. There's gonna be AC and N. AC is going to be the faster type that's out right now. It's going to have beam forming technology, so it's going to make a direct beam to your device instead of making a radius of Wi-Fi. So a lot faster connection that way. Plus it supports a lot faster signal as well. So if you are using your devices, especially newer devices that are you know about two years old or newer, you're going to want to go with AC. Realistically, I would suggest AC for anybody because it sets you up for the future. Even if your devices are older, you are set for the future with an AC router. So from there, it's really just the model number. This number is going to determine how fast the router is going to transfer data. Now, you can get one that's like a, an N300. That's going to be the N rated Wi-Fi, so pretty slow 
by the nature of being called N, plus it's gonna be 300 megabytes per second, which sounds like a lot, but when it comes to transfer speeds, that's gonna be very, very low on the scale. And just so you can get reference, this scale of numbers can go from like 150 up to 5300 or higher depending on what routers have come out recently. So for most people, assuming that the four ethernet ports is gonna be plenty for you and you are in a normal home with a couple devices, you know, you have the usual Netflix stream, at least one or two of those, and you have, you know, cell phones, family home is kind of what I'm describing here. You have some computers or just the standard household here with a couple people in it, you're going to want to stay around the 1800 mark. Now there's not a whole lot of routers that have 1800 exactly, and by that I mean you're gonna to wanna to go from 1600 up to like 2300, kinda of stay in that range. 1600 is kinda of low, I usually wouldn't go there, I would stick around 1900 to be specific, but anywhere between 1600 and 2300, you're going to be perfectly fine with you know, eight devices on at once, as long as your modem can support that and keep the consistent speed. In my household, it's just me and my mom on the internet. Occasionally we have a third person on the internet, depending on if someone's visiting or what the case is. But we have a modem that has eight download channels and four upload channels, works fine. Sometimes it gets a little slow, like I said, but our router is going to be a Netgear Nighthawk AC1900. So we're right in that ballpark, like I said, the 1900 is kind of what I fell in love with. I think it works really, really well. I've gone through a couple of them because of electrical storms and that kind of stuff, but if you get a protection plan on it as somewhere like Best Buy or Amazon, it's wonderful just get that thing replaced. Super easy, but that is the router I would go with. I would stay around the AC1900 model number range, give or take a couple hundred. I really wouldn't go past 1600 or above 2300 unless you have tons of devices on your network. So what have we learned in this video? That it's very important to pick the right modem and router for your usage. Now while it might cost more than that one that the provider is going to give to you for either 100 bucks or charging like 8 to 10 bucks a month to rent, even though you're spending like 200, 300 bucks on this setup, you're going to see a huge improvement over what the provider is going to give you. I would not recommend going through a provider when it comes to renting or buy a modem slash router slash bundle whatever it may be i would just buy your own modem slash router or if there's a bundle i don't see a problem with that as long as you stick with the guidelines make sure you have enough channels on your modem make sure it's the right type of modem make sure your router has the speed that you are going to need so thank you guys for watching this video if you have any questions for me leave them in the comments down below i'll help you out as soon as i see the comment hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one peace